Welcome to The View from Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and Webcast One Live.com. Yeah, welcome to The View from a Pew and 99.3 KTIA. Um, good to have you listening with us today. As you can see, I am not your host, Reich Plekis, today. But uh, <laughs> I'm John Chapman sitting in while he's having to be out of town. But uh, it's a pleasure to get to be with you and, uh, and uh, be a part of the program today. And, of course, we have uh, my wife, Judy Chapman, with us. And you actually uh, know her more than you do me. So I think Reich was sticking with the theme of Beauty and the Beast. So Beauty remains, but the Beast chair just changed a little bit. So. <laughs> Um, no, and it's good to have with us. We are uh, going to be introducing and delighted to have Brenda McClintock, uh, minister and psalmist from Springfield, Missouri. And we're really looking forward to uh, what she's going to bring and what the Lord has with her and uh, and to share with us. And uh, Judy, would you go ahead and open us up and um, um, with a word of prayer? Sure. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, thankful for this day. God, we're thankful for this time, Father, and we do open up our hearts to you. Father, I pray that you would open the hearts of every listener here to hear and receive what the Spirit of the Lord would speak to them today. Father, thank you for Brenda and what you have given to her, and we just ask that your Spirit would lead and guide and direct us now as we share a little time together in the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Brenda, welcome to the show today. It's good to have you. Thank you so much, and it is such a pleasure and an honor, and I appreciate you having me on your show. I'm excited uh, to see what God's going to do. Yeah, we are too. Uh, that's that's the that's the beauty of it is he gets to roll that out kind of as it all happens. <laughs> Brenda, it would seem you've been in ministry for some time. I'm noticing here that it says in your bio that you started singing when you were 10. How in the world did that come about at 10? I, I was afraid to come out of my bedroom when I was 10. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm a PK. I'm a preacher's kid. So my my parents, you know, when I was a child, my mom always sang. And so I sang harmony with her is how I started. And I started playing the drums when I was 10 years old, too, uh, in the church. And everyone had to come and see this girl drummer that played the drums and sang at the same time. And so I've just always loved music and ministry. And my parents really uh, was a strong influence to cultivate that part of my life. And so, yeah, I've been singing for quite a long time. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, would you say that when you began that at, at, a, at a young age like that, and you were drumming and you were singing, would you say that you knew that early on um, in your life that God had something particular for you? Or was there a little bit later time that something happened? You went, you know what? God's calling me to this with his purpose in mind. You know, I knew when I was young, actually, I knew there was a call of God on my life, and there was uh, something tangible and very real that was happening on the inside of me, even as a child. And, you know, that's one of the reasons, you know, John and Judy, that I believe that it's really, really important for us to start planting the seed in, in the heart of the next generation and our children, because when they have that seed, it gives it the opportunity to bloom and to grow. But uh, I definitely did know that God had something very, very special uh, for me. And as my parents, you know, helped me to be faithful, they were a great example uh, to my life of faithfulness and attending church and being uh, there in the presence of God to cultivate the right things, that it helped me, you know, to solidify the things that God put in me. Mm -hmm. Brenda, that's that's exciting to listen to. Um, I see in your, um, you know, I'm reading your paperwork and I see that you've um, ministered in a lot of different avenues, uh, psalmist, worship leader, songwriter, soloist. Could you uh, expound on those just a little bit and give us your heart on that experience for you? Yes. Um, you know, as a psalmist, of course, that's more uh, what I do now, and, and as a worship leader, I'm the praise and worship leader at Eagle Heights Worship Center in Springfield, Missouri, and that, that's one of my number one loves, is to lead praise and worship. I love 
praise and worship. And as a psalmist, it's not just a singer, but it's it's hearing the heart of God, sometimes in the middle of a song, and like new inspirational. Sometimes I'll hear a song that'll come out of another song and, and start singing that, and many times it will be prophetic, or it'll be the word that a congregation needs to hear, even through singing, and they will definitely, you know, hear the voice of God, and people will start just crying, and sometimes people come up to me afterwards and say, oh my God, you know, go Pastor, you don't know, you know, during worship today, it was just so prophetic and just right on to my life of where I've been and even how I've just prayed, and, you know, so that's a powerful part of of the ministry that I operate in. And I do also, I've, I've been a songwriter for a number of years, uh, and mainly I just started writing songs out of my own experience and, of course, pain and, and hurt. Life impacts everybody. No one is exempt, no matter if saved or sitter. It rains on us all. Mm-hmm. And I just started writing songs from the very depths of my heart, uh, not by listening to other people's stuff and trying to mimic or copy, but I just wanted to be and express who God has made me all by myself. And when I uh, started doing that and I actually sang the first song, you know, um, you know, people were really moved by the presence of God in that. And, and as I, you know, was a good steward with, with how I first wrote a song, then he'd give me another. And then all of a sudden he'd give me another, whether I'm worshiping at home, you know, all of a sudden another song would come up into my spirit as I worship in my private time. Or, you know, especially now in my life as pastors, we've been pastoring for quite a long while, that the different trials and and tests that we've been through and faced come out on the other side, you know, has helped uh, to write a lot of the songs. Uh, that I write. Amen. There's nothing like some trial, isn't there, to let uh, truth really pour out of your heart. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, the other day um, we were listening to your uh, song, uh, I'm Healed, and um, Judy played it for me first, and then uh, um, uh, Reich sent me the MP3 that we were listening to that, and and Judy said, what do you think? And I said, man, I said, the one thing that keeps going over in my heart, and uh, she had said the exact same thing in this, is that there there was a line, kind of this this linear line that I could hear uh, this attachment to your heart. It's almost like um, I don't know. I don't know the best way to say this. It's not that we weren't hearing your voice. You're singing because the the singing was coming forth, but that direct line uh. of the truth of the words were pouring out. I could almost say we were hearing your heart. The heart cry. The heart cry. We were hearing your heart cry in the midst of that. And I told Judy, I said, man, that's what it seemed like when I was hearing the song. And you don't always hear that because I know there's this fine line between um, performing and uh, and worship and yeah. the genuine wish of what happens to people when they. They begin to sing, and you can tell it's been birthed out of struggle, trial, yeah. tribulation, and I think mm-hmm. that that comes forth and it's shown. And we really heard that in your song, and so that's a that's a point we really um, heard in that. I really ex- experienced that. I know Judy did too. Yeah. And you were kind of talking about how people respond when you're leading worship. You know, in this time that we're in right now, there's a lot of different ideas. The church seems to be looking like uh, I, I'm going to have to go there. In my opinion, it's starting to look odd to me. And uh-huh. um, the direction the church seems to be going or what the idea of growth is or what the idea of growing a church is. What You know, right. sometimes we think growing a church is uh, just shifting the sheep from pew to pew, when in fact, uh-huh. you know, the growing of the body of Christ is when somebody receives Jesus Christ as their personal yeah. Savior. Now you've grown the body. Yeah. <laughs> well, in this time, in this era, what what role do you feel that that um, that um, the body of Christ really needs to grab a hold of in regards to worship and the role of worship in what the church needs now? Oh man, you know, I just we opened a can, heart, didn't we? You go ahead with oh, that. Oh man, you you struck a chord with me because my heart's cry. I mean, real cry is that you know, church is not about us. It's really about God and yeah. church. In the past, it used to be we came to church to come to worship. We came for God. We came for a God encounter instead of, you know, me showing up at church and say, well, what can church do for me? And I'm here to be entertained and let me just watch a a praise team on a stage and see the lights. And, And there's nothing wrong with that. But when worship is about us only and we don't give anything to God, my heart's cry is that the church get back to a place where we come to really worship 
uh, where we come to worship is when we give all that we are to all that he is. Amen. That's real worship. And so when we come and we just stand there and we're just entertained, we really, we came to worship service, but we didn't worship at all. Right. And my, my heart's cry is when people can just open their heart and get saturated in his presence again and get empowered. And then when they leave the church, they're able to go out and impact the world with a great anointing, with a fresh wind on their life, like a fresh kiss from God. And, you know, fresh refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. And, and as a praise and worship leader, I, I told our church one day, I said, okay, and, and I love our church. Our, our people know how to really praise and, and get in there and seek after God. And, but I told him one day, I said, you know, I look for the day and I crave the day that the congregation's praise and worship mm-hmm. outpraises the praise team's praise and worship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want it to be real. We want them to really uh, have that love experience of their own. Yeah, and absolutely. it's, it, yeah, it's hard to praise God if you don't have your own direct connection. I always yeah. uh, say lo- uh, praise and worship is love responding to love. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And as we experience his love, we just desire to give it back to him, you know, more and more complete. Definitely so. Uh, Brenda, I'm wondering uh, if you could tell us just a little bit about your personal life. Is there a special man in your life, a family? What 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 has God given to you? Oh man, I have a wonderful, wonderful husband, and I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> I know I'm so <laughs> prejudiced, but but I've been married for I just celebrated 25 year anniversary, and he's Praise such the Lord. a yeah, he's such a man of God. He's a powerful preacher. He has an apostolic mantle on his life. So, you know, it makes it real easy to submit under uh, his ministry, you know, as his wife and also as a, you know, a traveling psalmist. And when I operate in the prophetic, you know, he's a, a covering that is a, a great covering with a great anointing. And uh, we also, uh, since I've been married, uh, when we first started, our first seven and a half years of being married, we traveled as full-time evangelists, and uh, we were known back then as the Power Pack Team Ministry. Wow. <laughs> and that's how that we were promoted, and we went to over 100 churches in the United States and into Canada, and we did that for seven and a half years full-time in ministry, and I love that. I so love that. So, you know, God gave me a man that is a uh, someone that I could help him meet a vision and be a help meet to him. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, and then we had three children. Mm. I have a 24-year-old. Her name is Crystal, and I have an 18-year-old son, David, which is a phenomenal drummer and, and a preacher. He preaches to the youth. And then I have a 16-year-old daughter, Brittany, and she is a powerful frontline singer, and she just knows how to seek the heart of God as well. And so I have three children, and I just, I love my family. Um, we just have a beautiful time together, and and boy, is they're, they're growing up, and now my son's, you know, he's graduated out of uh, high school and doing a full-time job, you know, things are, are shifting. But, you know, God's given me a great, uh, my mom uh, is, uh, she used to be a pastor with my father as well. And mm. uh, she, my father has passed away, mm. but he was a great, had apostolic a mantle, mm-hmm. a very prophetic. And I mean, man, when daddy would prophesy to you and flow in that gift, I'm telling you, it was right on the nail. Mm. That's wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful. He didn't miss nothing. And so uh, my mama, after he passed, she is now uh, in our church with us at Eagle Heights Worship Center. And, and she's a, uh, you know, a powerful speaker in her own right and has a, a beautiful ministry. And again, she's also a singer. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. So, so that kind of runs in my family. Very good. Uh, 
Well, hold on to that. We're going to come back in just a couple, okay. uh, just a little bit here. We're going to hear a word from our sponsors. And uh, we're with Brenda McClintock, uh, psalmist and worship leader. And uh, we're glad to have her uh, with us today. And uh, we are looking forward to the next, uh, the next portion after this when we start getting into the reformation of the church. So um, stick with us as we come back here in just a, just a couple minutes. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Visit eMetroFord.com for your guaranteed credit approval. Good credit, bad credit, no credit. Everybody drives with guaranteed credit approval at eMetroFord.com. Visit eMetroFord.com today. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. Hey, psst, let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Save us! Help! Somebody save us! Somebody help! Help! Save us! Hi, I'm Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. Hooray! We're saved! Consumer Credit! Yeah! Hey, we're back here at 99.3 KTIA FM, The View from the Pew, with my favorite guest, Pastor Don and Pastor Judy Chapman. I was not thinking up on you. I've been listening to you guys. I took a late lunch. <laughs> and, uh, so I just want to say, you know, thanks for sitting in the driver's seat. You guys are called. You are anointed. You are appointed by God to do what you're doing. And, and Pastor Brenda, how are you? 
I am great. Thank you. I, I have to tell you, when um, I got hooked up with you and I heard that song, I, I played that song to Pastor Judy in the car, and we both looked at each other, and we said, she is anointed. She <laughs> is anointed. I mean, we had church in the Lexus, didn't we, Judy? Yes, we did, Reich, right then and there. Amen. And I, I tell you, get ready. Um, you know, Pastor John and Judy, you are in great hands, uh, Pastor Brenda with them. These people have the love of God on their lives, and they will not mix any words. They will not put any spice on it. They will give it to you just as boldly and as beautifully as Christ wrote it yeah. himself. But I know that you guys are getting ready to talk about the Reformation of the Church, and I'm just going to listen in, but Pastor Brenda, get ready, because your best is yet to come. The, the music, Helen Baylor has been listening to I Am Healed time and time and time again. And, and I know you don't know a lot of her testimony, but the song that you wrote, that God put in you, is ministering to her mm. as a Grammy artist, as a gospel artist, and she's been Praise ministering for, for decades, you know. That's but awesome. But know that God reformed you for a day just as though today. And he's, he's getting ready to use you mightily and your husband as well. And you guys just have a great show. I'm going to tune in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute out here. Ryan will put me on mute. And, um, you know, Pastor John, um, just a word for you. As I'm sitting here looking at the lovely Lake Michigan in Chicago right now and uh, 72 degrees, um, you know, Pastor John, I, I so look forward to what God is doing in yours and Judy's church, White Dove Church there in Des Moines. I know that you are not afraid to speak the truth and that you are a man of might and a man, a man of power, and, and uh, you have a, a, a wife of valor. And um, the mantle which you guys carry is a heavy mantle. And I know you're not a huge mega church, and you have no desire to be a mega church, but God's got plans for you guys. And um, this is this is just the start. I'm so glad you guys are driving today. I appreciate that, Rick. It's, it, uh, you know, I was a little nervous because you put me behind the microphone. I don't even have a license to be sitting here. So, uh, um, but I think it's all. You don't all... need one. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? Just learning to drive as we go. That's just fine. Mm-hmm. So, thanks yeah. for calling in to appreciate that, Rick. We know we got you there. Absolutely. We got our bags. Yep. Yes, to, to all of our listeners and our viewers, get ready for the, the, the Word of God to hit you on the Reformation of the Church like never before. Pastor John and Judy Chapman are probably the best people I know to bring this to you. God bless you all. I'm going to chime out and tune in, okay? Thank you, Reich. Good to talk to you, Reich. Thank you. Yep. Amen. No, that's, in, that's, uh, that's excellent. And, and, you know, it brings us kind of into this next segment and what we're talking about, uh, um, the Reformation of the Church. And every time I hear the phrase Reformation of the Church, you know, I went to, I was raised Baptist, Assemblies of God, and then I went to a Lutheran college, and neither of those denominations understood why I did that. And um, then I got involved with uh, Youth of the Mission. And I'm just remembering that when anybody talked about the Reformation of the Church, you know, I'm thinking about somebody taking uh, a, a, a parchment and writing something on it and nail it on the established church's door and saying it is time for a change. And, uh, you know, I get all these old pictures of uh, the way it used to be and how many uh, uh, hundreds of years ago that was. What does it mean? What do you think, Brenda, it means today when we're talking about reformation of the church? Is that something that we need to have happen, uh, be it worldwide or even particular in this country? I definitely uh, believe that. Uh, To me, and of course, you know, Reformation means to bring something back on course, uh, making changes with the intention to set it back on the right path. And I just, you know, personally, I've seen many churches, not all, uh, but many, they've moved into a more passive uh, like a more entertainment stage, mm-hmm. as we kind of mentioned before, mm-hmm. you know, a, just a quick motivate you kind of sermon with a quick drive-by, you know, type of message. And I think we're seeing that we're becoming more convenience-driven rather than commitment-driven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's something, you know, that has concerned me. And um, just like, you know, uh, you, Pastor Judy, uh, and you, Pastor John, probably seeing the same things. You know, people uh, sometimes are really wanting convenience more than they're wanting to be uh, committed because commitment challenges convenience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, uh, I, I kind of see it like this, Pastor Brenda, that uh, in today's church kind of wants Jesus to belong to them instead of them belonging to him. 
Oh, come on. Yeah. And so we, we <laughs> conveniently put him into our lives when it suits us. And we forget that he's the king of glory. He's the one who paid yes. the price. He's the one that bought us out of slavery. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and, and you know, I think when we talk about the church almost taking a, a passive stance, I think one of the things that seems to get removed or taken out or preached out, and I understand, um, you know, I've heard um, pastors say, you know, well, we're, you know, I know the Holy Spirit exists, but there's, we have to be careful about what that is in the church. And I think the phrase, um, mm. have to be careful about what the Holy Spirit is in the church, I understand their, their idea from where they're coming from. But time and time again, the more you pull out or extract the third part of God, which is the Holy yeah. Spirit, his power in action yeah. now, today, in the lives of people right now. When you pull that out, you have to put in place of that um, the ordinations of man, the ideas of man, yeah. the, the written up ideals of man. And, and we keep cycling ourselves over into becoming that kind of church where Jesus says, you know, you conveniently keep your own, you conveniently throw away the law or the heart of God, really, mm-hmm. by maintaining your own traditions. And, uh, um, you know, what, what do you see, uh, Brenda, as something that's going to be very key in re-ena- re- reinstilling in this Reformation? What will open the door for um, that to happen in the churches? Well, you know, it, it's true that we prioritize what we love. Right. And, and I think if the body of Christ would really, truly really get in that place where they have fallen in love. You know, uh, the Lord says, you know, go back to your first love. I have, you know, you're doing this and this, but I have somewhat mm-hmm. against you because you've left the first love. And when we, you know, we first fall in love, we prioritize that, you know. And I think if we start prioritizing, then we're going to start seeking. You seek what you prioritize, and you have a passion uh, for those things, because, you know, Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the mm-hmm. kingdom of God. Yeah. It has to be number one priority. And his righteousness and all these other things are going to be added to you. Because, well, you know, you guys know when you got God, you've got everything else. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. And, you know, when you say about when um, God says, come back to your first love, you know, right now we've just been teaching out of Revelation in chapter 2. And when mm-hmm. God says that to the, when Jesus says that to the church of Ephesus, the next thing he says, and it's indicative of actually every single one of the, uh, well, six out of the seven churches, Jesus always says this, I have this against you. And, you know, that's something we need to be open to as believers, is that Jesus yeah. wants to speak into our lives things of correction. And when he said, you have lost your first love, and we think, well, how do I fall in love again with him? And mm-hmm. in the scripture there, Jesus says, what he asks of the church at Ephesus is he says, repent of your deeds. And you're like, wait a minute, yeah. I got to repent for falling out of love with you, Jesus? And that's what <laughs> yeah. he says. He says, repent of your deeds and remember the things at the first. And recalling what the salvation is, recall the price that he paid. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think I think the gift of evangelist is going to be brought up. I think the Spirit of God is going to move on that gift because it's time for the call again of repentance to the body of Christ and to the church, because if not, like the church of Ephesus, Jesus says, I will withdraw my light from you. Come on, that's right. You know, because my question is, really, when when we're going to church and entering into worship, is real repentance and transformation occurring to bring us closer to the Lord, or are we going to church and still leaving the same way? You know, because Romans is really, really clear you know, I beseech you, you know, by the mercies of God, present your body mm-hmm. a living sacrifice. It's totally acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then in verse 2, it goes on and says, and be not conformed or in the same pattern to this world. Amen. But right. Be mm-hmm. ye, but be ye transformed. And that's the part right there. Be ye transformed or metamorphosized or changed by the renewing of your mind. Right. That, you know, it goes on to say what's good and acceptable. Amen. Right. Amen. Brenda, would you uh, share with us just uh, a little bit here about the birthing of that song, I Am yes. Healed, and about what what happened in your life that caused um, oh, that experience? Now, if, if I can do this without crying, I'm going to try. That's okay. Uh, we'll pass uh, you a uh, tissue uh, through the radio. Yes. You know, and I will say this. 
this song was culminated through uh, actually a number of years of experience of my life when I went through things I need to be healed from. The first thing was with my first daughter, Crystal, when she was born. Uh, she was two weeks overdue, perfectly healthy baby. Uh, long story short, but when she was born, uh, because of difficulties, uh, she received massive brain damage. And so my whole world crumbled, and, and nothing was like I thought it was going to be. And I was traumatized. I was numb. I was, I, I was mad at God. I was broken as far as I feel someone could ever be broken. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it, it was a great test of my life where I almost wanted to walk away Mm -hmm. uh, from God, because it was so uh, such a traumatic thing that did happen. I can't go into all the details. Yeah, we can imagine. Uh, yes. And so uh, I had to go through a period of time in that where I was able to really commune with God and get back to the place of intimacy after being upset with him. Right. <laughs> and not understanding and getting to the place of healing. And then, uh, you know, then we became into pastoring and and all the betrayal that, you know, you will experience through the years of, you know, people that walk away or people that make promises and then they don't keep those promises. And, and God bless pastors out there because, you know, they really do go through uh, so much different types of, you know, hurts and, and different yeah. things. So with a culmination of all of that in my life experience and my church experience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, then also I, I went through a time I was working out trying to get healthy and I went a little bit too far. I hurt my back and then I was having pain every day in my body. And, Brandon, hold on, uh, hold on to that yeah. thought there where you were where you hurt your back and we're going to come back here in just a, a, a couple minutes here. Okay. We're going to have a word from our sponsor again, but just hold on to that thought. You are sure. with The View from a Pew, KTIA 99.3, and uh, we're glad to have you with us today. Keep on listening for the last part of the segment. Um, we're talking about the reformation of the church. We're talking about being healed. I think there's things you're going to want to hear about. Yep, we're, we're, we're talking about miracles. Amen, amen. Well, uh, stick with us. We'll be right back. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about, is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. 
We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and webcast one live.com. Welcome back to The View from a Pew, KTIA 99.3. I'm your guest host, John Chapman, uh, with my lovely wife, Judy, uh, still carrying on in the Beauty and the Beast theme here. Uh, <laughs> as you know, Wright carries on in the, in the show, and we're just uh, glad to be a part of that. Um, we have with us Brenda McClintock, and she is uh, giving testimony to... Um, uh, talking about where the heart of the song I'm Healed has been birthed from. And I'm sorry we had to go to a break there, Brenda, but uh, you were talking about uh, the struggles with, uh, you had the birth of your daughter who was uh, injured during birth, and then um, then you were uh, injured your back also. So, yeah, just uh, take us there, would you? Okay, I sure will. And, and like I said, I was, uh, you know, experiencing betrayal and people walking away. Right. Um, that everyone experiences. But I did go through a season of some physical difficulty uh, where I'd hurt my back. And, and it was time for me to get up on a Sunday morning and lead praise and worship at church. And I just almost, my muscles were so tight. I was in so much pain from just waking up out of bed that I almost couldn't breathe. It scared me. I thought I was going to have to go to the emergency room. I thought, well, if I take a, you know, a hot shower real quick, maybe that's going to help. But I was just like, God, you know, please help me. Please help me. And it was hard for me to breathe. And my husband was trying to help me. And when I got into the shower, this is where this song really come up, up out of my spirit. I heard the voice of God say, to me, call those things that are not as though they were. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I began in the shower just to sing, I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And and I couldn't sing it very well because it was hard for me to breathe. Mm -hmm. And I just kept singing that and I just keep calling it and declaring. And and by the time I got out of the shower, I, I wasn't like totally healed and totally, you know, ready to go to church. I was feeling a little bit better. But all of a sudden, in a matter of about 10 minutes, I started pinning down the new song, I'm Healed. And and is what I realized is that, first of all, the Lord took me through, I had to go through a season of my life of great trauma, drama, and emotional healing Mm -hmm. and be able to get to the other side. And then the next was a spiritual healing that I had to come through uh, of experiencing hurts and different things. And then the third one was then coming through physical pain. And, and I had to learn to attack the attack, mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. fight back and not be passive and lay down and, and whine. You know, you can either whine or win. And, and that was the day I chose to win instead of whine about it because you can praise uh, and, and be raised. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you can complain and remain. And so I know, you know, how the Spirit of the Lord works. And, and I just, he told me, begin to declare, the, no matter what it feels like, no matter what it looks like, begin to declare, I'm healed. Stand firm in your faith and declare it. You know that by my stripes you were healed. Amen. Amen. And, and by my word, you know, he sent his word and he healed mm. any disease. And so healing is available. And, and that's how that song, it just, it come up out of my spirit. And, and again, it wasn't uh, a, an easy path uh, right. for that song right. to be yeah. birthed in me. But I thank God every day for it because numerous testimonies 
uh, everywhere I go, I sing that song. I'm I'm very much known for that song. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, you know, people have been healed in the middle of, you know, when I just do solo uh, performances, as people would call it, or I front other people's concerts, and, and I sing that song and bring that. I mean, people will lift their hands and worship, and if, if they'll just go there with me, uh, people get healings, you know, headaches are gone, mm. uh, people that couldn't lift their hands all yeah. the lift their hands. I, I had a man that was in intensive care even, and this was a testimony just a couple years ago, that his wife bought my CD at a conference. And her husband then got very, very sick. He had been over on the mission field and actually contracted a deadly disease. Mm. And he was on an incubation machine. Mm. She took that CD and that song. I got goosebumps all over me right now. <laughs> but she took that CD and played that song and put earphones oh, on wow. her husband's head yeah. and played it nonstop nonstop. Uh-huh. And in a long story short, he came out of a coma. He started breathing the things, all the black stuff left out of his lungs mm. and he was healed. Praise and the Lord. Of course, when he checked out, I went to the hospital and they just was praising God for that song. There's also another testimony of a lady uh, that had breast cancer and kept going to the doctor and getting a bad report after bad report. Mm-hmm. She said, she said, yeah. Pastor Brenda, I put in your song. And I would play, I'm healed. And she said, no matter what the doctor's report was, I would just worship and believe God. What a great testimony. Awesome. That yeah. is awesome. You know, Brenda, I'm reminded when you shared about um, having to walk through the experience of the trauma drama and yeah. the emotional healing, um, you know, the pain that you experienced from the betrayals, you know, from the, all the years of shepherding the flock, um, you know, as as we walk through our life, God ultimately in our character is shaping Christ in each and every one of us. And so, you know, Jesus said, if he suffered things in the world, we would too. And, you know, you think of him experiencing the betrayal of the kiss of Judah, Judas, (laughs) sorry, Judas. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we, we have to know what that feels like so that Mm -hmm. we put our faith in no person ultimately, but always and only the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. Amen. You know, one of the things you said, too, in that testimony, when you were uh, in the shower and you were experiencing the pain and you were your husband was getting ready to help you to get to the, the hospital, that you said that scripture rose up in you. Suddenly you were reminded the spirit of God brought it up in you and said, begin to call those things which are not as though they were. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I think sometimes we miss the beginning of the experience that God wants to have for us. Because have you found that sometimes people try to um, attach themselves to our experiences, but to have our own experience with the Spirit of God really begins in that I'm standing in the shower moment, I'm hurting, I'm feeling betrayed, I've got physical pain going on in my body, but then the Spirit of God rises up inside of you and says, do this. And I mean, that is the fire. That is the fire that is needed in the body of Christ. I feel if people would just kind of lay down their uh, themselves wherever they're at and whether they first of all, they stop waiting to go to church to worship. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. oh, gosh, I just can't wait to worship because I'm going to get to church and there I'm really going to. That's where I can really worship. And if people would stop kind of uh, waiting for that Sunday morning worship time and realize, you know, my time might be in the shower when I'm hurting. Yes. And it's time to make a declaration. Now, I just need to pour my heart out and worship you now, Lord, because we need that experience when the Spirit of God rises up in us and says, it is finished, or begin to run, or begin to declare. And that's when the Spirit of we begin to have His power activate in our lives because we are having what I like to call an in-the-now moment. Right, a personal yeah. word from Him directly to you, where as He takes His written word and He speaks it into your present life moment, moment and it becomes the very life that you need. Yeah, you know, it's from your father to his daughter personally, only for you, because he sees your moment and he hears your heart cry. 
Yeah. One of the things that I experience sometimes, in, and and I'm actually, I, I kind of uh, have more of an evangelistic call in my life, but right now it's pastoral, as the Lord has asked at this point. But people will come to me and say, you know, Pastor, you know, I, I don't know who I'm supposed to be. I don't know what God has called me to be. Uh-huh. Who am I and what am I called to be? And, you know, this might not be the pad answer, but it's the same answer I give them. I say, it is up to you to find out. It is up okay. to you to go to God and come to know exactly what that is. Yes. And uh, they need to go get that word on their own so that they can have, they can come to me and say, Pastor, I heard from Jesus. The Spirit of mm-hmm. God spoke to me. I know what I'm supposed to do now. And that's the moment they need to be having. You know, you are with The View from a Pew with John and Judy Chapman today. And we have our guest with us, Brenda McClintock. Uh, we're going to take a break here for just a short couple minutes again. But make sure you come back as we finish out this uh, really neat radio program as the Lord's just having it. So... <laughs> From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. See them here, see them there. You got bad credit, we don't care. Visit eMetroFord.com for your guaranteed credit approval. Good credit, bad credit, no credit. Everybody drives with guaranteed credit approval at eMetroFord.com. Visit eMetroFord.com today. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Save us! Help! Somebody save us! Somebody help! Help! Save us! Hi, I'm Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. Hooray! We're saved! Consumer Credit! Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and webcast One livecom Welcome back to The View from a Pew. This is John Chapman, co-host Judy Chapman, and uh, we're just uh, excited to have this time together. Welcome back to, uh, we're talking about the Reformation of the Church. Uh, We are talking about worship in its place. We're talking about being healed. We're talking about having and needing your own experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. So um, uh, it's been an excellent, uh, excellent time together. Um, Brenda, are you hanging with us there? It's quite a time to sit there on the phone, isn't it? And, uh, oh, and go I'm, on. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's excellent. You know, we've got about 10 minutes uh, or so left in the show today. And, you know, what, uh, um, what would you say, you know, I know that your primary place has been psalmist and, and uh, worship pastor, uh, worship leader, and then you've been talking about in the place of worship, people have been healed as a result yeah. of being in that place of worship. Um, you know, I think definitely um, healing is a part of reformation. It, being healed is almost like our person being reformed altogether. Mm-hmm. You know, it's almost like the miracle that we need that reforms us or, or changes us. And in some way, I think the body of Christ is... Um, 
not only needing to come back, and we've talked about that earlier in the program, not only needing to come back into falling in love to his first love with Jesus Christ yeah. again, yeah. but then receiving from him that which is necessary. And to some, and to some, um, mm-hmm. you know, they have to be healed of, um, you were talking about when f- you felt like people were walking away from you and um, you were being betrayed or, or, or not lifted up in your time of need. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's such an easy place for, um, you know, the devil wants to take a wedge and he wants to find any crack he can in our lives. And then he wants to jam yeah. it in there and gently start pounding it until he's opened us up till right. we become, we come in a place like, Lord, man, I need, I need to be healed. I've got this crack in my heart and there's a wedge in there. And, um, you were talking about too, where you almost needed to address the issue. Like you needed to be the counterattack. And, and I'm thinking of when the scripture tells us to resist the devil yeah. and he will flee. And my thought on that is that, you know, when we talk about resisting the devil, very often in my mind, I get the idea of, okay, I'm going to cross my arms and I'm going to stare at the devil spiritually in his face. And I'm going to say, well, I'm not moving. And I don't think he's as passive as that. I think he's trying to be more active to create things in believers that causes us to walk away from Jesus, walk away from our first love because of hurt, pain, or even healing we need in our bodies. And um, when the scripture talks about resisting him, I almost wonder if the body hasn't sat back on its laurels just a little too much and say, hey, you know what? Uh, You know, our kids, they play football. They're both offensive linemen. And, you know, when the defensive lineman comes after him to try to go get the quarterback, they don't put they don't cross their arms and stand there and say, I'm going to resist you. You know, they both plant their feet in the ground. They stick their hands out. They grab a hold of him and say, you are not getting past me. That's it. And that's, I think, something that we need to adopt a little bit in the body of Christ. And sometimes that comes forth in our, you know, we need to be active against the enemy by declaring who Jesus is. Amen. Yeah. And that's in, in, that's a very active role. You know, Scripture talks about that we need to bind the strong man up, that yeah. we need to get a hold and say, no, we're, we're counterattacking this. More than even resisting, we're giving an, an offensive to this through my faith in Christ and letting the Spirit of God... Um, move through my life against the work of the enemy that Jesus may be glorified and the works of God may be glorified. Yes. Amen. 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 That's a good word, Pastor. Well, Uh (laughs) you know, and that's just rising up. So what do you think now, you know, in the course of that worship too, um, when you do that, and we're in the season where I just think it is time for reformation in the church, what, um, what would you say um, to people out there today or the body of Christ, if you had something to kind of drop an idea out there and say, you know what, I would encourage you to do this because this is important yes. that our lives would be reformed. I would definitely encourage people to spend more time, uh, you know, personally in, in, in God's presence, whether it's at home, Bible reading, we all need that, that personal time with God. Mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of people have gotten away from that because yep. in the world, things are so busy. Oh, and right. the Bible clearly says that the cares of this life in the world, it tries to choke out. It literally tries to take the gospel, the word. It tries to take God's presence and choke it out of our life. And I would say spend time in his presence and, and seek after God because he says, you know, call unto me in Jeremiah and go and pray unto me and yeah. I will hearken unto you and you shall seek me and you will find me yes. when you search for me with all of your heart. But we have to do it with all of our heart. You yes. know, I can't just be, okay, well, God, thank you for this day. Bless you. Amen. Now I'm going about my business and, and I'm done with all of that. He said, I want you to seek me with all of your heart. I want all of you. That's just like when he says, if you're going to love me, let's just go all in. You know, love me with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your body, your soul, your strength. I want all of you because it's the truth that anything that robs you of divine presence has robbed you of divine reward. Mm -hmm. Right. And we need God's presence. And when I personally spend time in his presence, I'm telling you, I am ready to go to church. I can't (laughs) wait to go to church. I bring fire to church with me. I bring passion into the church. And as Tommy, Tommy Tenney once said, he said that when passion gets back in the church, presence comes down the aisle. Amen. Amen. And Amen. that's what we need in our churches so that people can be transformed and, and they can actually feel conviction 
because a powerful presence of God Amen. back in the church. And Amen. We, we need that again instead of people coming and, like I said, just, you know, herd them in like cows and herd them back out. Well, Brenda, we've come to the end of our show here. It goes fast. It does. Yep, the time has come, and I want to thank you for spending time with us, for sharing your heart with us, and uh, for uh, sharing your music and your testimonies. Thank you so much. It's been a joy being here and meeting you and and being able to share together. Thank you. Thank you. Lord bless you. Judy, would you would you go ahead and uh, just just close us in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for this time in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that all the ears that have heard the testimonies come forth, Father, that they would be uh, drawn closer to you out of desire and passion, Father. We ask that you would bring reformation to your body. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we look for all of you to join us tomorrow uh, here again at 99.3 KTIA, The View from a Pew. We're going to continue with this idea of the Reformation in the church, and you're going to want to be on that. You're going to want to be a part of that, and uh, you might want to weigh in on that. We're going to ask you. You're going to want to weigh in on that, I think. We need to hear what you're thinking about what the church is needing in Reformation today. Amen? Amen. All right. Yeah. Again, uh, thank you, Brenda, for being with us uh, today, and we just ask that God's going to anoint your ministry and continue to do so in incredibly powerful ways. Um, our okay. thanks to Reich. You know, I know he's a long ways away, but he's been looking over our shoulders. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you, the Reich. opportunity. Thank you, Reich. Yep. Thanks, Reich. <laughs> Amen.